Greetings, this is August 16th, and if we look at the wind today, we've got strong southwest gusts coming over the Lytton, the Tremont Creek, and the White Rock Lake Fire moving from the southwest to the northeast, and above in the Flat Lake area, the Bonaparte, uh, the Sparks Lake Fire Complex, those winds are coming from the north. And this weather model is showing from the north 10 kilometers an hour at noon. There is rain anticipated for many areas in the southern interior over the next 72 hours and it looks like Calgary is going to get a dousing. Uh, we'll take a look at that at the end of the video. First let's go to the Lytton fire. Uh, we're looking at that southeast flank that had made moves over Highway 8. This is the infrared data that we were seeing yesterday and now today. That looks like potentially a 20 kilometer move east over Coil and Canford northwest of Merritt. We're moving slightly east to look at this fire flank. Merritt is in the lower right hand portion of the screen. Spence's Bridge is just off the top left hand corner and uh, Highway 8 is running right center of the screen and then over to the left. Winds could be variable today, mainly coming from the west, but uh, there is a potential to come from the northwest tomorrow with some significant gusts, and uh, hopefully there's rain for this area. It is in the forecast. And if we zoom out, we can see that uh, the eastern flank of this fire zone is approximately two kilometers from Highway 97C, heading north towards Logan Lake. We're moving north now along Highway 97C. We can see the Tremont Creek fire. This is yesterday's infrared and now today's. This update is just showing the new infrared over the last 12 and 6 hours. We can see that movement northeastwards towards Cherry Creek. It's still in the forested block south of Cherry Creek. Now we're looking at the combined infrared over the last 24 hours. We can see that eastern extent I'm seeing infrared east of Durand Lake and to the northwest of Greenstone Mountain. I was seeing infrared around Pasca and uh, Weiss Lakes yesterday. I'm not seeing that today, though there is a large cluster to the west of those lakes. We are now moving northwest across Highway 1. This is the Pavilion Fire. It is showing up as four main clusters primarily on the western, northwestern, and southwestern side of Fred Antoine Park, right in the mountains there, coming down to the valley, and on the southeastern flank, it does appear to be building up intensity closer to the Fraser River. We're moving eastward now to the Sparks Lake Fire Complex, that's Bonaparte Lake at the top of the screen. This is the movement east that it made through Bonaparte Park. Now today with southwest winds we can see it's pushed even further northeast. Viewer Bill noted that uh, that lighter shaded area to the east of the fire zone could be part of the McClure fire that happened in the past and hopefully that acts as a bit of a fire break but there could be a lot of grass in there and that can flash quickly. On the wind check uh, from about a half hour ago it was showing 10 kilometers from the north so that uh, wind direction change may have occurred and now pushing the fire back into that forested zone. The scale at the bottom left of the screen is telling me it's approximately 16 to 18 kilometers from the North Thompson River. We are moving northwest now to the Flat Lake Fire Zone. Other than the large cluster that's moved to the east of Moose Valley, I'm not seeing a lot of increased activity here. I'm not seeing any sort of approach in the infrared towards Highway 97. However, with the cloud, haze, and smoke in the area, we may not be seeing all the data. So you're going to need that ground report from BC Wildfire. The link is in the description below. We should always check there first to find out what the situation is and what activity they're doing. We're moving now to the White Rock Lake Fire Complex. Uh, we are looking at the North Okanagan at the lower right portion of the screen. Monty Lake is up at the top left portion of the screen. This is the data from yesterday. Now we're rolling into the new infrared displaying over the last uh, six hours. There is some new activity being displayed to the northwest of Westside, uh, also to the south 
southwest of Monty Lake. However, we're not seeing a lot of data there. I suspect uh, much of the new infrared is being obscured by smoke and haze. This screen is combining all the data for the last 24 hours, so we can see kind of the last known positions. There was activity to the east of Monty Lake up the Paxton Valley in a cluster that's moved up the hill from Biancato Lake, uh, about the 1200 meter mark. Bulo Lake still has activity to the southeast and to the northeast. There are infrared clusters showing up directly west of Kalini Beach. I cannot accurately say whether or not this infrared has encroached upon the community. Those large orange squares are 750 meter modus indications. They do not mean that fire is consuming that square, just that heat was detected somewhere within the square and it may be off position. There is also infrared being displayed right up to the southwest side of Six Mile Creek Road, but I don't see it moving across uh, into the forested block that is to the southwest of Armstrong, Spalmachine, Sweetsbridge. So it's still on the southwest side of Six Mile Creek Road according to this infrared. And just moving back south of Monty Lake, this is the fire infrared being displayed to the west of Westwold and that is showing up approximately six kilometers southwest of the valley. We are moving south now to Manning Park. This is East Gate, uh, the Garrison Lake Fire. Uh, it has shown extensive movement eastward. Uh, I understand that there may be disruption in access, so you want to check with Dry BC and find out what routes are available. This is the Crow's Nest number three. Princeton is to the north, just off screen, and Hope is to the left, just off screen. Moving north to the Coquihalla number five, this is around the Brookmere area. There was a fire to the west of the highway. Uh, another fire has popped up on the east side of the highway. There could be road closures here as well, so again, check with Drive BC. I can see one lone hot spot to the east of Kingsvale. I don't know if that is a spot fire thrown out from this main activity, uh, but uh, do be on the watch for spot fires thrown ahead of these fire zones. Uh, debris and incendiary material does travel aloft and then lands further and can ignite new spot fires. We are now zooming into the South Okanagan. This is the fire zone east of Oliver and Osuyas, and we can see it's made progression towards Mount Baldy. It's up on the Okanagan Plateau. Winds can increase at this elevation, so if you are north, northeast, or east of this fire zone in those areas, please be watchful and check with BC Wildfire for a situation report. We are moving eastwards. A lower arrow is at the left-hand side of the screen. Uh, Nelson and the fire near Winslow, Terrazzo, is uh, to the just to the right of center. We there are increased activity in this fire zone. It seems pretty much contained to what we saw over the last couple of days, but uh, that infrared is still flaring up. And there is a couple of clusters uh, to the north of the Octopus Creek fire on the east side of Lower Arrow Lake towards Nakus. So uh, we'll have to be watchful of those. And at the southwest end of Kootenai Lake, uh, that fire zone appears to have more activity. It does appear to be moving slightly southwards, also on the east side of the lake. That fire zone appears to have moved eastward from Destiny Bay and Boswell. There is also a new fire zone to watch out for that is southeast of Cranbrook. This is the Plum Bob fire uh, that's popped up. And just by the shape of that fire zone, it appears to be following wind patterns that are local to this area. We are now moving northward to the Shushwap. There's a lot of isolated infrared pockets to the east of Adams Lake, to the east of the north arm of the Shushwap, and that Sycamuse fire has progressed northeastward. It's uh, extended quite a bit. A lot of activity down near Mabel Lake, Sugar Lake, up in the Monashies. A lot of these infrared clusters moving to the northeast. 
we're jumping up to the central portion of the province. We can see that Nechaco Fire uh, Cutoff Creek. That is just to the left of center. Prince George is just to the right of center. And over closer to Tumbler Ridge, there is the Ridgeview Fire and the Tent Fire Creek Fire, which is active. It's just very difficult to see on this infrared. And finally, we are pulling out, looking at the southern portion of British Columbia. We can see those active fire zones. And when we turn on NASA's MODIS system, there are those bands of cloud covering up the north portion of this zone. And we can see evidence of those southwest winds uh, pushing smoke trails to the northeast and the east. However, the wind is changing. Again, here we are looking at southern BC. We can see that pocket of high velocity wind in the center of the screen moving 22 kilometers an hour from the southwest near the White Rock Lake fire zone and close to Tremont Creek and the Lytton fire. Whereas up in the north around Flat Lake Bonaparte, the winds are shifting coming 10 kilometers from the north and over in the Shushwap, four kilometers from the west, a lot of variation. Uh, down near the Kootenai Lake area from the west, pushing smoke and those fire zones eastward. The forecast near the Kamloops area is showing winds from the west. There may be some precipitation overnight and then tomorrow the skies will start to clear a bit and winds will shift and come quite strong from the north with gusts up towards 40-50 kilometers an hour. Wednesday we're looking at variable winds mainly from the west and the northwest but not as strong and conditions could get a little drier and temperatures will come up a bit around 23 degrees. We are looking at the rain forecast now. This is over the next 12 hours. We see a pocket of precipitation around the Shushwap area. Uh, then it's going to build and stretch to the southwest. Our friends out in Calgary, they could be seeing a bit of rain and then it really comes in. Uh, they're going to see a lot of precipitation and we'll see more precipitation in the southern interior. That's a good sign and I hope that holds true. And if we look at the accumulation over the next five days, there could be significant accumulation up around 20 millimeters in the Vernon area. So my fingers, toes, hooves and claws are all crossed, hoping for that rain to come into the area in some of these fire zones and give our wonderful wildfire crews a break. They have done a fantastic job in overwhelming conditions. I want to thank them and thank all the people involved keeping us safe. Thank you very much for watching. Um, I appreciate all your comments and uh, your incentive and encouragement. This, it takes a little while to get these videos up. So please do go to the links and check out some of the data for yourself. Each one of these fire zones deserves far more attention than I've been giving it. So you'll be able to zoom in and see more detail. In the meantime, please be safe. Uh, look out for friends and family. I know there's a lot of people moving around trying to evade these fire zones. Look out for each other. Thank you. And keep your nose to the breeze.